rights versus privileges. That's our topic real quick. My name is Anthony Ganji. Welcome to Tear Talk. If this is your first time to my YouTube channel, if you like the topics, subscribe, like, interact, engage. Even if you disagree, subscribe, interact, engage. It's a great way for us to learn. It's constructive, if you will. Uh, the YouTube channel is growing, so thank you to those who have been subscribing, interacting, and engaging. I'm trying to make the channel uh, more attainable, if you will. I'm trying to make sure that we get those searches, and I'm, I'm fixing my tags, making sure that the videos can be found. But again, besides YouTube, you can find us on other venues, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Spreaker.com, Player FM, Stitcher Radio, Facebook, don't forget, like the page, and soon to be the MNN Network, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, which is available to all five boroughs of New York through Verizon Bios, or you can stream it live through their website. So I want to talk about inmate rights versus privileges. Do we know the differences? That's the key. Do we know the difference between inmate rights and inmate privileges? That's a key when it comes to dealing with the inmate population. So let's talk, what, what's privileges? In my opinion, privileges are something that the inmates have to earn. And that means if they have to earn it, if they mess up, we could take it away. And that's how we maintain control, correct? If an inmate acts foolish, does, you know, breaks the rules constantly or, 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 or is just always disruptive, violent, whatever the case may be, there's privileges that they have that we could take away, like a TV, Contact visits should be a privilege. Radio, canteen, things that they want that they don't have to have. Things that they want that are not guaranteed. Things that they want that are not a right. Those are privileges. And we're able to take away those things because that's how we maintain control. If they want it, they have to work their way back. And that's a great humane way to maintain control. Rights something that we have to give. We have no choice in corrections. We have to provide them with these rights. Now, some would, uh, place to live, good medical, programming, if they want programming, three square meals a day, you know, the list goes on, hygiene, you know, hygiene products. These are their rights. Visits, as I said, can be argued, but what can't be argued is that contact visits is not a right. We can still give them non-contact visits. So for those that want to argue that visits is a right because they push the rehabilitation aspect, fine. They can have non-contact visits. But in the meantime, contact visits can be argued that it's more of a privilege than a right. So I'll give you an example. So when people start taking advantage of the system based on what they believe are rights, they challenge us because they don't think that we can take those things away. So let's talk about visits. And this is just one example, I'm gonna keep this quick. Let's say it's been proven that drugs are coming in through visits, and we know it. Drugs are coming in through contact visits, and by the way, I can argue all day, or we can argue all day that it's not the only way that drugs are coming in, I know that. But for this example, I wanna bring up visits. Let's say that Inmates are taking advantage of contact visits by talking to family members, friends, whoever it is, to smuggle drugs into the facility. And lately with synthetic marijuana, you know, K2, um, Suboxone, we have a lot of overdoses happening in our facility, which is threatening the inmate population, also staff. Staff, fentanyl, it's taking a, a lot of people with them. So we, in order to stop this, especially get facilities that are going through overdoses, in order for us to stop this, we have to react. So the best way that we control a threat is to lock it down and identify what that threat is. Because granted, if we don't identify it and we don't commit to any action and something happens again, we're gonna be held responsible. The people that are saying we're denying people's rights are gonna be the same ones that are going to also argue that we're not protecting the population. So universal precaution would be in this case, let's say with visits, is no contact visits. We can't identify the threat. We don't know how the drugs are, are, are coming in through visits. So we lock it down and we have no contact visits, but we don't eliminate visits altogether. You still get your non-contact visits. We eliminate contact visits. Now what happens is people, of course, will contest it even though we're acting in a universal precaution. But the one thing they don't challenge, or the one thing that they should be going after, are the inmates who take advantage 
of these privileges. And yes, I'm going to say privileges. They take advantage of these privileges, thinking the first off that it's a right and that it cannot be taken away. But contact visits should be seen as a privilege. Because then inmates will think twice before they take advantage of that privilege because they know that at any moment that privilege can be taken away from them. But if we don't safeguard those privileges and we automatically make those privileges rights, then it makes it harder for us to maintain control and keep it safe and secured inside that correctional facility because then the inmates have nothing to lose. I'm sure right now when inmates think it's rights and we go to challenge them, the inmate in their mind's thinking, well, what are you going to do about it? Sure, I'll get a little slap on the hand, but you can't take away my visits. So the reward is great and the risk is minimal. And that's the key, right? I mean, I don't know if you guys ever read um, Why Criminals Offend, but in some cases, or in most cases, it's because the reward is great and the risk is minimal. And that's what's happening here when we mix privileges with rights. Rights cannot get taken away. Privileges can. And if inmates feel that their privileges are rights and that those rights can't get taken away, then there's minimal risk and a great reward. So we need to start understanding the difference between rights and privileges. And we need to also understand that it's the privileges that help us operate the facility in a humane manner. Because yes, guys, just like you treat a child, if you're a parent, if they act foolish, you take away the things that they want and they have to earn it back. That's how we maintain control inside the correctional facility. But if we don't have that power or control to take away the privileges, then we start losing control of the facility. Or the other option isn't so humane. It's not so humane. And we don't want to go that route. So again, guys, understand the difference between rights and privileges. Understand why not everything's a right and why we need privileges, why inmates have to earn certain privileges because that helps us maintain control. Do research before we start condemning practices that help us maintain a safe and secured facility. And remember, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do collectively. Maintain a safe and secure facility for both staff and inmates alike. And the changes with, from people who don't understand the system, you're hurting us. Talk to the front line. Listen to us before you jump the gun. Love you guys. Stay safe.